Today, I'll be finding out whether or not All Paula's newest fitness tracker is actually any good. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. When I started my channel a few years ago, I focused quite a lot on fitness trackers, and there was two fitness trackers that I took a look at from a company called All Paula. Here's a quick clip of that. So today, we're gonna to take a look at this, a fitness tracker by a company called Alpola or Paula or Pala. Do you know, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Now you can see things have changed quite drastically. One being my beard is quite short. But aside from the beard, today we're gonna to take a look at All Paula's newest offering, which is this, the All Paula ECG. So today I'll be running you through the interface and the app to see what the changes are since the original All Paula fitness trackers a couple of years ago. But before I do, Let's take a look at the specs. First and foremost, the difference between this and the older Opala bands is its namesake. It has an ECG monitor built in. This is the silver button on the bottom of the tracker. It also uses a small metal pad on the back of the wristband for this, which sits neatly alongside two red and two green lights to detect pretty much anything your body's doing right now. The changeable strap is nice and secure on the back end at least, with a standard buckle type fixing which I find preferable to the pop button style on other fitness trackers. I can't find whether this band has an IP rating, so I can't recommend swimming with it. However, the band will last around seven days on a full charge, and with a relatively simple interface, it's certainly designed for ease of use. Right, let's dive in, first of all, by talking about what's similar. Now, the actual style, I think, is quite similar to the original or Paula fitness trackers. I mean, you have got this big metal thing at the bottom, which I'll go into shortly, but style-wise, it's very similar. Another thing is very similar is the way the bands work. Now, you can actually change the bands on these by giving it a good pull and it comes off like this and like that. Now, that isn't the most secure strap in the world, but you do have to give it a good tug to get it off. What I loved originally about the Orpola Fitness Trackers was that this is all you need to charge it. You don't need a big charger to fit around it or a cable to plug in it all you need is the tracker itself because this little blue bit at the top is a usb connector and all you do to charge it is marry it up to the lines inside a charger like this plug it in and you're in and that is how you charge it you plug it into the wall and you're good to go now i think from my last videos a couple of people commented that that wasn't always the most suitable way to charge your device because if you've got a particularly big charging setup, this might not fit in there because of the way it curves round. Well, there is a solution. Just use something like this, which is a basic USB male to female. All you do is plug that in there like that. That one goes in there like that. And you're in, you've got a cable. But to me, that defeats the object using a cable because at the end of the day, that's what I really like about this fitness tracker. In all truth, I haven't kept up to date with or Paula's fitness tracker, so I'm not sure what's been and gone in the past two years. But all of the fitness trackers that I previously tried just had some sort of rubbish kind of digital display. This has a full collar display. So let's have a look at that in closer detail. So the interface is really straightforward. You have this one button on the bottom, which is also your ECG monitor, but you tap it, the screen wakes up. Now you can choose three different uh, clock faces. This, in my opinion, is the best because the actual clock is the biggest, and me being 30, my eyesight is obviously failing. But if I tap this bot thing at the bottom here, I can go to your daily exercise. You've got your heart rates. You've got your blood pressure. You've got your sleep, your uh, SPO, God knows what that is. Uh, you can also start an exercise through here and take an ECG. So literally one button takes you through everything. Now the downside of this is that you can't swipe to access your notifications later on. If you get a notification and it disappears, you can no longer see what that notification was. So that's a bit of a shame. But actually, I really like the simplicity of how this works. One button operation with no swiping gestures or anything else. I quite like it. It's simple. Overall, not bad. Now, 
The thing I always say with these fitness trackers though is that they are as only as good as the app that it comes with. Now this is quite an interesting one because in the instruction booklet that I got given, it said to use this app called WoFit and it was woeful. So I emailed or Paula and I asked them, I said, look, listen, you know, the app that it tells me to use in the instruction booklet isn't the best. I don't find that it works very well. Is there another app that I can use? Funnily enough, I can use the original app from the old or Paula bands, which I really, really liked. So I downloaded that and dived in. Let's have a look. So this is the H-Band app. Now let's pop in here. And like I said, the thing that I liked about this app was its simplicity and its design. It was well done, I thought. Now at the moment, this is showing my current stuff today, essentially. So I've got how many steps I've done, how much sleep I had last night, and also um, things like my heart rate, my blood pressure, my blood oxygen, my heart rate value, and my ECG data. So you can see that there's a hell of a lot of stuff. I mean, to be completely transparent with you, I've no idea what the hell blood oxygen is, and no idea what heart rate value is either, or HRV. Is it heart rate value? I don't know, God knows. God knows how that even differs from heart rate. I don't know. I'm sure someone out there is screaming now because you know exactly what it is, but that data potentially isn't that relevant to myself. The things I like to look at are steps, sleep, and heart rate, which are things I understand. Now, interestingly, at the bottom, this is something I want to focus on as well. We have ECG. Now, it says without ECG data because that is because I haven't done one today, but I will show you how to do one in just a second. But if I pop in there and have a look at my historical records from yesterday, which I did three ECG tests, we can go in there and I can see the information about um, the test that I did. So I can even go in and play it back as well. So I'm going to skip forward. Let's play it on. There you are. You can see my heart rate going up and down there. And then what it does basically gives you uh, an analytical result. So here it says I've got sinus rhythm. This ECG showed no abnormal phenomenon. Now, the thing you need to remember about the ECG monitors on this are that they are good and they give you a rough idea on the health of your heart. But I would advise that you always seek professional medical help if you think you have a heart condition. In my opinion, or I think as is advised by all of the clinical boards in the UK, you can't rely on these 100% because they might be accurate up to a certain point, but you're only using one sensor. Obviously, if you go to the doctors, they use the things where they strap you up with like 60 different sensors, they are gonna be much more accurate. So if you are worried or you are concerned, always seek medical help. Professional medical help, not some backstreet doctor. Mm. But let's just run through how to actually take an ECG on one of these, because that was something I struggled with at first, but then kind of understood that I shouldn't move at all during the ECG. So let's take a look. There's a couple of ways of doing your ECG. One is through the app, one is through the tracker, which is what we're doing now. So once you've cycled through and gotten to your ECG setting, hold your finger on the metal contact on the bottom. Keep it there. Do not move your arm, do not move your finger, and apply an even pressure to the fitness tracker. Now, the reason you want to keep your finger on that contact with pressure is because you want the bottom sensor as well on the underside of the tracker to come in contact with your skin. Otherwise, the ECG won't work. So that is my experience with the app. Overall, a very positive experience. And actually, the connectivity between that and the watch has been very, very consistent. So overall, I'm quite happy with the updates that they've done so far. Now, it is, to me, missing one feature that I think could, that could make this a fantastic choice of fitness tracker. And that is a do not disturb function. Now, a lot of other fitness trackers or some fitness trackers will have an option to turn off notifications between a certain time and a certain time. This doesn't have that. Instead, if you want to turn notifications on or off, every time you want to do that, go into the app, go into the band here, settings, then go message notifications and then close all which could get very, very annoying because it is a bit finicky. However, I will say this. I emailed them after testing this out for a week and said to them, 
it needed a do not disturb function. And actually they replied pretty quickly and they said, don't worry, that's something we'll look at adding really, really soon. So actually the fact that they responded positively and it looks like something they're implementing soon, that's a really positive thing. And I like companies that receive feedback positively and change their products accordingly. And the thing is that is just a software thing. You can add that in at a later date. The actual hardware of this is very, very, very good indeed. When it comes to price, this is a little on the pricier side of some of the other recent fitness trackers I've tried. This is £49 currently over on Amazon. And as usual, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourselves. Before I go on to my final thoughts on the Orpola ECG tracker, I want to say a massive thanks to all my current patrons. You guys are incredible. And if you've found today's video of any help at all, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. But on to my final thoughts on this device. Overall, is this a good update to the Orpola fitness trackers that I tried two years ago? Absolutely. This is completely different and so far ahead in terms of technology. I mean, the other stuff simply tracked either, I think it was heart rate and steps, and that's about it. This does everything and things that I don't even understand. Like I said, I'm sure some of you will. The thing is, I can't verify any of the data, such as blood pressure and the ECG stuff. I can't verify that that is bang on perfectly correct because I haven't got the medical equipment to actually test myself and this at the same time. But who does? Well, the only place is the doctor. So I want to reiterate, if you use one of these and it's showing you some kind of worrying data or you are concerned for whatever reason, seek proper professional medical help. These things give you a good idea, but they're never meant to be 100% accurate. But as far as it goes, I've been genuinely impressed with the updates that they've done. And what can I say? Well done, Orpola. I look forward to trying another one out in two years' time. Mm. And that concludes today's review. I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon. Before you go, consider supporting me on my Patreon page by clicking here. It'll give you some great discounts on stuff I've reviewed and helps me to continue doing reviews. If you want to see some fun stuff, click here to see the highlights of Stu's Reviews. And as a friendly reminder, click this button to subscribe.